and contact with other people. So if you want to sing on Smokey Ray, he said, yeah, so they get you to listen to my songs and pick their favorite songs. And that's the I was trying to uh, captivate some new audience members, and I would just like them to take away from it that somebody who is in their era or in their genre of music that they like is singing with me. But, you know, thinking of, well, Smokey Malcolm's had a great on this together, Smokey and James, this is interesting. So, you know, it was really, really more about that, where their voices could fit, what it would leave, what it would sound like. I heard uh, a John Legend sing Quiet Storm on one of his shows live. And after the show, I went over and said, John, you should record that, please. He said, oh, Smokey, he said, that's, that's a good idea, but he never did until now. I've been exposed to Smokey's writing since I was a very young child. It's been highly influential to me. His sense of phrasing and poetry and elegance, that voice is so, uh, is so um, singular and distinct and, and, and beautiful. And it just kind of floats on top of the room. I had my first group when I was probably about 11 or 12, and we called ourselves Five Chimes. Oh, I didn't know music was going to work out. All I knew is that I was doing it, and this was my lifelong childhood from like four or five years old coming true. He's around not just because he's a great artist, a great singer, and a great poet, but because everyone loves him. I'm standing in the mirror and I'm shaving, and I'm just looking at him, I'm kind of humming the thing. I thought to myself, I said, now what if a person that cries so much, until if you really got close on them and examined their face, you would see tracks that their tears have made. Smokey Robinson first came into my life uh, when I was a teenager collecting soul records. Uh, I was lucky enough to pick Tracks of My Tears because um, I've always loved the song. It may be the greatest pop song I've ever written. For somebody like Captain to say it, that one of my songs is one of his favorite songs and he thinks it's the greatest song I've ever written, I can't beat that. It's the classic opening line for a song. I don't like you, but I love you. Seems like I'm think, always thinking of you. So what? Just brilliant. I don't It was infectious to the point of you made out with it, you made love to it, you went to high school to it. It was just a huge era. I had no idea what Steven was going to do with you when he got hold of him. So he did it rock. With the big string guitars and all that stuff like that. So that's who he is. He is a rock. And he's still relevant, he still sings, he still plays, he still sings great. It's uh, just a national treasure. Yo, that felt good. Let's not lose that. Let's go right away again. Okay. Jesse J sounded to me like this soulful black girl who was from uh, New York, East LA, somewhere like that. Come to find out, she's this little English girl who is one of the best singers I've ever heard. Her version or her take on Cruiser is so soulful. When they first played it for me, she had done it before I did it, but Randy first played it for me, I said, I don't want to see this, man. I said, we should just put this on, we just rehearsing it, you know, because she absolutely killed it. She ignited it. My greatest joy of feeling other people in terms of my songs is, uh, see, first of all, all these people that are working on this record are professionals, and when they sing my songs, it is a joy. To hear Stephen or, or, or John or all the other people sing my songs is a dream come true. But, however, that same dream come true for me, if I hear you humming, if I hear you just singing it around your house or in the shower, <laughs> I, I just love hearing my songs sung by other people.